Welcome. I'm Steve Rader Ginsburg, Director of the Otterino Center for the Arts at the University of St. Joseph. This year continues to be an unusually challenging year for the arts, artists, and our ability to gather together as a community. One bright spot for arts at the university and for the larger community is our artist in residence program where artists can continue to work with students and remain safe and socially distanced. Our artists in residence include 860 Movement, Palabolas, Dance and Light, and Cuatro Puntos. All of our programs are virtual and re will remain so for the rest of the year. Please visit our website at otterino.usj.edu to find out more about upcoming performances. Today's performance by Cuatro Puntos is an exciting collaboration with Hartford artists as they have created an homage to our home city. Coming Home, a Hartford collage, video premiere and community discussion. Music of longtime Hartford resident and composer David McBride will be performed by Cuatro Puntos with a video journey composed by dozens of Hartford based artists. Today's performance is a unique partnership with the Greater Hartford Arts Council, Cuatro Puntos, and the Otterino Center for the Arts, and Self Suffice, the rap poet. This program and all of our virtual programs are made free to attend, yet they do carry significant costs. So thank you so much to all of you who have contributed funds to support live arts at the Otterino Center and our area artists, and also thanks to funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Lastly, this is a virtual live event and we encourage you to use the chat box embedded in the digital stage page to interact and participate in the discussion. Thank you so much and enjoy today's performance. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Amanda Roy. I'm the Director of Community Impact at the Greater Hartford Arts Council. The Arts Council is so happy to have been a part of coming home. We teamed up with Cuatro Puntos and the Otterino Center to help put together a call to artists and to promote the program. Um, so we're really excited to be a part of a collaborative project with so many artists and organizations as well. Um, at the Arts Council, we work closely with artists and arts organizations on a daily basis. Um, in the past year, we've really seen the, the struggle that the art sector has gone through, but at the same time, there have been a bunch of silver linings, um, I'll, I'll have to say. And in the past year, one of those has really been collaboration and support um, between artists and arts organizations and, and coming home definitely exemplifies that. We've seen the benefits um, in this past year, if we can think that there are benefits, but there have been um, some great shared resources that have happened, some great work that um, folks have been doing together in the arts. And I hope that as we emerge from the pandemic that we can hold on to that, that part so we can continue to collaborate. And again, as, as as we emerge from the pandemic, the, the arts really cannot be in the background. They have to be at the forefront. Our state, our region, our towns and our cities, they cannot recover without the arts. Um, arts are critical to our well-being. They're critical to our voices. They're critical to the economy. So I encourage you to continue supporting arts organizations and artists in our community, in your community, um, everywhere. And I'm looking forward to, to seeing this production and to the discussion that's gonna happen afterwards and to hear from those artists who have been a part of this project. Thank you all for tuning in. Hello and welcome again to Coming Home, a Hartford Collage. My name is Kevin Bishop and I am director of Cuatro Puntos, an organization based in Hartford. Cuatro Puntos works to promote intercultural dialogue and collaboration through the performance, writing, and teaching of music. And collaboration is a big part of what we do. That's why we're very excited about today's program. Uh, some of the collaborations that Cuatro Puntos is regularly a part of include the Music Moves Hartford Street Choir, um, COVID times now, just Music Moves Hartford minus the choir part, um, general music. But um, 
we do that in collaboration with Christchurch Cathedral in downtown, um, where we work in soup kitchens and shelters in Hartford. It's a very exciting collaboration. And our other branch, the Quattro Puntos Ensemble, who you'll hear today, regularly works um, alongside guest artists from around the region and the world in programming like the one today and like all of them on our series. So I invite you to go to quattropuntos.org and um, look at some of the programming that's coming up and some of the things we've done in the past. So a lot of varied, um, varied types of programming all centered around music. So a little bit about what you're going to hear today. So the music you will hear is called Coming Home. That's where the name came from and is written by David McBride. This came about in 2017 when we applied, when Quattropuntos applied on behalf of Quattropuntos Ensemble um, for a creation of new works grant from the Roberts Foundation here in Connecticut, uh, which we received. And this allowed us to commission the, the piece Coming Home. And David wrote it as a 26-minute monumental work um, that was a soundscape, a tour of the city of Hartford. And you will hear um, many actual sounds of the city. It's very literal in the piece. And you can read more about it at the bottom of the digital concert hall page. So um, pretty cool that that happened. Um, but the unexpected part happened as soon as David sent me the final score for the piece. We had it all worked out. He was going to be coming and working with us, you know, to 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 learn the piece, to to go all of that good stuff. Um, he was in working with the Music with Hartford Street Choir at the time. Um, there was going to be a collaboration with that group in addition to Coming Home or alongside Coming Home as, as part of the celebration of arts and humanity in Hartford. Um, but unfortunately, three days after he sent me the final score, he passed away unexpectedly. So he never even got a chance to write the program notes. There are some program notes at the bottom of the page that I resurrected with the help of his family and by analyzing the music and the conversations we had about the music before he passed. Um, but this work therefore became coming home very fittingly became his final, his final work. So today you're hearing the final work um, of David McBride, a university of Hartford professor and prolific composer um and this this is this is it this is his last and in the end we decided to do exactly what david spent his life doing and that's trying to bring people together through music through community music so instead of just recording this and sticking it on a shelf somewhere or putting it on a cd that probably not very many people would listen to um after the university of hartford um sponsored the recording of the piece, the audio recording that's right here today, we decided to use that spirit of collaboration and create a collage highlighting the artistic and cultural diversity in and around the city of Hartford in the Greater Hartford area. So I want to thank the Greater Hartford Arts Council for helping us do a call for artists um, to reach a broad uh, range of artists. Um, I want to thank the Otterino Center for hosting this and all of our events this year. It's been a great partnership. Um, and I want to thank the University of Hartford for sponsoring the, um, the production of the audio that you'll hear, especially Justin Kurtz and his music and technology class. Um, it's a very exciting collaboration that 38 artists from around um, the greater Hartford area. Um, most of these are, well, all of these are smaller scale organizations or individual artists. Of course, Hartford has its big mainstays, um, Bushnell, uh, Hartford Stage, Theater Works, etc. Um, those are not, although very important to our um, cultural fabric in the city, they're not included here uh, because we're focusing on smaller scale individual artists and small organizations. So you'll see um, various um, dance, visual art, photography, murals, all sorts of stuff um, in here as kind of an uh, microcosm or encapsulation of some of the the fantastic arts happening in the greater Hartford area. Um, the majority of these artists and art is in the actual city of Hartford or very close by. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our host for the day, um, Self Suffice, the rap poet. So he is going to do an intro to the piece, a rap intro. Um, then you will hear Coming Home, a Hartford collage here and see all of the artwork. Then following that, 
there will be a discussion with some of our artists. And for any other artists that would like to participate, um, you can click the button at the bottom that says artists join our panel. We'll cycle you in if it's possible. And the very last thing I want would ask everybody to do, if you hear nothing else of what I've said, I would love if everybody would go and follow the artists that you are going to see today on this digital concert hall page. Um, if you scroll down a bit, you will see all the contact info for all of the artists, most especially their Instagram. So it's super easy to grab your phone and go down that list and just type in those um, Instagram handles um, at and then their name, um, they're all the handles are in purple bold below. So follow Quattro Puntos and all of the artists on Instagram and anywhere else that's on that list that you are connected to. Super easy way to support the artists as well as every day have your feed full of beautiful photos and works of art and clips of dance and music from all around our very own region. So without further ado, Self Suffice, The Rap Poet, and Coming Home, A Hartford Collage. Me through different points of view can see what seems too good to be true and always an illusion. Why dismiss it? Long for vacations, but heart isn't far away, just hard to visit. Hard to say, but don't dismiss it. No, the distance isn't. Why just ride or even step outside your door and be surprised how much it changed inside? David McBride married the sound and so he saw in some the city does confide. Yeah, just like David, kind right where David plays cause Kaim likes to laugh and live where city bikes just minutes from long country hikes from rise to set from daughter's sons who orbit on I-91 as fragrant flowers floating on ripples Elizabeth Park's pond boats sail over Weathersfield Cove hairs hop in these hip streets there's bats and Lisa knows David loves cats them felines plus the jazzy kind them swinging cats that Hartford find like Jack McCoy clean the love of Dolly. Jimmy Alma both loved highly. New Yorican to Brazilian tying Leo's food we eating. Caribbean patois speaking. All these people how they squeezing. So diverse in one small region. Jasmine and the crew programs at public libraries give reasons not to label people. Meet them not just label really see them. David's strings sound like it tastes when friend Sherry's abuela bakes a gourmet cake from love says please mistake not cause she's told not by mistake double on times camouflage or reveal Hartford's a collage the lowest paid most qualified Sade's love is stronger than pride could be a ode to Hartford teachers NGOs and college speakers rich poor sun snow all the weather Andy's heart filled eyes collect a record of all this and better Hartford's been had it shouts Jetta David made this to remind Remember, hope we play this cause his favorite thing was all of us collaborate together.
Hi everyone. Hey Kaim. What's up, bro? What's up? Hey Amanda. <laughs> wow. Whew. That was a let it breathe moment, right? Yeah, that was moving. I got a little verklempt at the end there. Woo. Was That's it awesome. because of the power of art to keep someone here in a sense after they have moved on from the physical? Yeah, what a it at the end, you could just feel like the celebration of his life and work. Like, wow, like that's what the arts can do. Like it captured it. It was really just incredible. I'm I, I'm so taken by just how um yeah. how each of the pieces really looked like it belonged with the music. It was really, really something. Right. And when David is looking into the camera at the end. I feel like that was a, a punctuation mark, you know? Um, I definitely wanna say shout out to Steve, shout out to Kevin, the Arturino Center, um, you know, Greater Hartford Arts Council, Quattro Puntos. There was a lot of thought, and, and the people that I'm mentioning now are just people who represent other big groups of people. That's why I'm thanking them because whoever put him there at the end looking at us, it was like, you see, you know, he was like, you see, like, yeah. I see you, you, you may have never met me, you know, a number of the artists never met David McBride. And yet he, before seeing us and before knowing this would happen in this way is, is like, I just collaborated with you, right. you know what I mean? Now you're still here moving your fingers and your feet around. So you need to collaborate with each other too. I just collaborated with you and I'm not even moving my fingers right now. What's up? Like I almost felt like there was a, a fun challenge in there. You know, like I get the feeling that he wasn't someone who was like overly mourned me. He was someone that's like, I'm gonna leave y'all with a challenge, you know? Right. And, and, I, yeah. and, I, and I feel like um, a big shout out to the artists. I apologize. I just tagged every single one of y'all and blew up the Instagram. Um, but 
I mean, that's a challenge for all of us, you know, to, to continue doing what we do. And, you know, t tell me some of some of your response, because, Amanda, you've been active in reaching out to artists for years and, and helping them continue to do what they do. But in this time right now in COVID, um, I know I've applied for a couple of grants and, and I'm very appreciative for that. How how does this represent what your job has been like in the midst of COVID? Yeah, I mean, this whole year has just been completely different. And to to see, um, you know, artists that I work with on a, a regular basis who are typically gig workers, I mean, their whole lives went upside down. And um, to see, right. you know, it, I mentioned collaboration in the beginning. I, it was a thread throughout the whole thing. I mean, for years I've been saying, <laughs> you know, we, we've got to share, we've got to share resources, we've got to come together. And, you know, I know a lot of us are, are on that same page and it, it can't go away, it's got to stay. And so to see this and to see how connected, even pieces that were created before mm -hmm. artists knew what this music sounded like that were woven into it, matched it and yeah how, how does that happen you know i mean that's magical that is magic right there and and that's i feel like that's a testament to this word art um i mean we have the word art and we have the word creativity and i would say like a lot of times we talk about art more as like the stuff that we show that people see whereas creativity captures the whole gamut there's a very like you said magical to use your word there's an unseen part, right? And I'm not gonna say that it's not received, but it's definitely not tangible, right? That all artists have to go into this zone um, and you and, and people who get that give artists permission to do that. I mean, imagine David with Quattro Puntos CT. Don't look up Quattro Puntos at Quattro Puntos CT, not the marketing firm somewhere else. They're right here in Connecticut, but you know, giving David the space to go within, right? Um, and I think that's, a, that's a, a source of trauma and disconnect for a lot of artists. Yes, David, it is awesome. Um, and to the previous comment also, absolutely. That's what we we're, we were, we were, you said it even better than us, that element of something that is left behind regardless of the physical. Um, but yeah, giving, giving artists that space to like go into this thing where they're disconnected from the rest of the world. Cause the rest of the world's like, where is it? What does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? And that's great. But that's what I call the reception part of the art. The biggest part of creativity is before you smell it or taste it or see it. It's, it's, it's within, right? So imagine you gave David the space to go within and he created this thing. He was into community orchestra, right? So his idea was this will bring people together, right? But not knowing how many people it would bring together. And that's the part of going within. I think every artist, when they set about a work, they give space for things that they didn't expect. Mm. And I don't know if it's like that in accounting and certain things where it's like, don't leave any space for unexpected things. You know, certainly in engineering. I was at the Grand Canyon recently. And I mean, if they didn't engineer that thing right, you go out the platform, <laughs> you don't want a creative artistic like view on it, right? But then with, with other things like this, just because it's not about good or bad, right? It's about what you're doing. But in spaces like this, we really need space to go in and allow and accept and see what unexpected things can happen. And clearly, I, I I say thank you, David, for doing that because you allowed something to happen that touched all of us and um, included all of us, yeah. you know, who who otherwise may, may have been trapped behind our computer screens when we're used to live gigging, as you said. And I'm used to diving off stages, so I, I definitely need that magical element of things to make me feel like we're still still doing art behind the yeah. screen. For sure, for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The dancers. Thank you to the dancers. I mean, captivating right from the start. Like mm. that piece by Erica and the End Ensemble, 
Oh my goodness. Stegosaurus through the snow. Yeah. Woo! She's like, we out here. <laughs> All right. All we right. Have artists so, joining us. Yes. Here we go, y'all. And and if you watching on YouTube or Facebook, you can join us directly on quatropuntos.org and jump in the chat. We'll love to show your comments on the screen, answer your questions even, um, and just accept accept your presence. So let's unmute one person at a time. So so the cats in my background don't like feedback loop through all of y'all. You hear meow, 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 meow. Oh, last thing I do want to say thank you to um, Lisa for being here. Thank you, Lisa, for some of the suggestions you made when I was working on my art. Um, I'm honored, thank you. Well, well, why don't we start with you, Lisa? Um, I think you can say more about what's happening right now than anyone. So what, what's your initial feelings right now? I am just so incredibly blown away by what I just saw and heard. It was really amazing. Mm. I know David would have loved every minute, all the artwork, the dance, the rap was sensational. Really, really extraordinary. So thank you for that. Thank you to everyone involved. Um, Quatro Puntos, the Autorino Center, St. Joseph's, everybody involved was such an enormous part, all the artists, and I'm really honored to be included in this. And I, I know I speak for Alma and Jimmy to say how proud we all are of David and his music and his contributions to the city of Hartford. So Alma actually contributed to this project as well as a visual artist. And, um, you know, she, she was in the video, we referenced like the suns and the solar discs and the flowers and tried to fit that in there. Um, your piece with the cats, um, <laughs> That cats just has so much to it, you know, and I have two cats in my house. So when you when you put that in there, I was like, you raise your hand if you heard the cats bouncing on the strings. <laughs> was it just me? I heard cats yeah. in there because I know cat energy. Um, yeah. So he definitely composed that into the piece, right? Absolutely. There are many pieces of David's where, where cats play key elements. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you how did you? create your piece with that ended up visually there? Well, uh, with apologies to John Cage, I actually took a score of his, which um, John Cage was a big influence on David. And all the cats are cats that David had in mm. his life. Um, all the time we were together, we had cats. And the two most important cats are sort of the biggest there, one of whom is... Okay. Um, Van Morrison is also Alma's cat, wonderful cat. And um, oh. coming home for David is is about coming home to Hartford and coming home to California and coming home to his home where the cats awaited him. And that was very, very important to him. So, so I think the meaning of coming home for him. So when, when the bar was there about like the cats and then like the jazz cats, kind of the double meanings there, um, you know, that was also kind of your family's energy there because Jimmy's a jazz musician too, right? Yes, yes. You're in you're David's other other child. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Jimmy's, what, how Jimmy's feeling about all of this or what, what's the story with Jimmy? Uh, yeah, I know that, um, as I said, my kids are, are watching right now, of course, and they're very proud. And David was immensely proud of both the kids. Um, they're both musicians. Alma's a wonderful musician as well. And Jimmy's a drummer. He, they both oh, like Amanda. <laughs> Amanda, collaboration. <laughs> yes. And both Jimmy and Alma live in New York. And, of course, Given the COVID situation, things are a little quiet now, but uh, it'll be back. And David loved to go hear Jimmy perform when he played around. So he was very proud, as I said. Thank you so much. That that was definitely, I think, a concern for all of us. I, I'll, I'll try to speak for all of the dozens of artists who participated. I know we, we felt that um, you would hopefully be seeing this and that you'd hopefully 
connect with um, what we were inspired to do would be a return. What we were inspired to do by David would in turn uh, c complete the cycle. Yeah, it continues, and and hopefully we're part of your story now. Um, Absolutely, and I know people in uh, family in California are watching as well, so I'm so glad they're here too. And enjoy the not snow out there, family. <laughs> and shout out to Texas; they just got hit with snow for like the first time ever. So they, yeah. some more people out there is uh, doing it. So Amanda, shall we introduce the next guest? Um, just just one by one before we. Do the group discussion? Yeah, that sounds great. Who's okay. who are we bringing in first? Let's go to Marlon with the beautiful paintings right behind him, letting you know, letting you know these is mine. <laughs> Can you hear us, Marlon? Oh, this is oh, wait, this is charcoal. This is black and white acrylic on a black canvas. So we're doing, working on different mediums during Corona. You know, we picked up a lot of things. We mm -hmm. really love our art. We should have been elevating, trying new things and finding what works. And so many things have been working. So I just can't wait for this to be over. Mm. You know, show the world some stuff they've never seen before. You know, that's what we should have been doing, you know, as artists. So for us, I find that this time was more beneficial to us than anybody else, because we love what we do. And if we love what you do, time stops. You have more time to do what you love. That's that flow state, right? That's that flow state. It's that flow that, state. That that inner part that's necessary before everybody else receives the art. You know, that timeless, you know, mama's like, Marlon, it's time for dinner. And we're that we're that four-year-old again that's just dancing so much. We love mama. We're not trying to ignore mama, but but you know. Mama can't reach us in this space. Right, right, right. So, and so, I, so look at this look, time. To mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it's like a two second latency. I didn't mean to cut you. Go ahead. No, I was just pretty much going on about the, um, the fact that Corona, we just took this time to just find some, some things we love. And I started toying with the charcoal a little more that most of us don't mess with and I stopped making a mess on the floor and it started looking a little cleaner on the canvas. So, you know, that's, again, I'm just thankful to Corona in a sense. I, th I think silver a lot linings. of <laughs> silver linings are in there for sure. Thanks, Marlon. All right. We'll go, we'll keep going with introductions. Kaim, what do you think? Bring Diana in. Yes. Let's bring Diana in, please. Hi, how is everyone doing? Doing great, doing great. Diana, just uh, give us a, a little, who is Diana? <laughs> okay, Diana is an artist and also a professor at Trinity College. Um, so uh, the piece that I, that I put in here um, that I was very lucky to be selected um, is Flow, um, which has a lot of, uh, my artwork has a lot of influence with music. So I tend to hear music in the background while I'm painting uh, or I'm writing poetry or fiction, etc. cetera. Um, and specifically with this piece, um, it, the reference is water. Um, and I started painting that when um, I was feeling a little bit stuck. And um, actually it was through art therapy where my um, therapist said, you know, you have to let things flow. And, it, the the painting progressively started to change um and uh it's interesting that you know i chose that for for this collaboration because um water is very specific to the the places of home that i've had in the past so um whether it was growing up in milwaukee lake michigan i was really close to lake michigan um connecticut river and then going to school in Albany, New York, so right next to the Hudson. So water has always been a constant feature when I, whenever I've called uh, any of those places home. So um, it just happened in happenstance perfectly. Um, so, yeah. That's great. That extra 
connection to coming home. I love yes. <laughs> the the flow, you know, I have to comment on that word flow, the water flow, the state of flow, and water connecting so many different things, right? Um I was on a plane recently and they have this new movie by Bruce Lee called Be Water. And I just, it makes me think of this because this is a multidisciplinary thing, right? Imagine, I don't know if a lot of us would have just naturally collaborated because a lot of times we, we're more like ice, you know, we're like, this is visual, this is dance, but like martial arts is an arts discipline. Culinary arts are a discipline. So the more we can, I love what you said, where you're listening to music while you're creating visual art, the more we can desegregate ourselves. I think there's something about art that, that is supposed to do that for our souls and, and bringing our, our, us flowing together. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, shall we bring in Jin? Hello guys, how are you doing? <clears throat> doing great. Well, that's our question to you. How are you? How are you feeling right now? Did what did you think of that? And and what was your process like coming into this? Oh, it's amazing. I can just resonate with the theme of you know the composition, the song, everything, because um, it's just bringing people together, and that's what I try to do with my music, with my photography, with you know things like that. And can you tell us a little bit about the piece that you had in in here? Um, well, I have walked through that you know, place many, many, many times. And it's uh, that image of just the sun hitting the buildings. It's just there all the time. So it was, it, it was just meant to be, I guess. You know, I guess I'm pretty sure a lot of photographers have taken pictures of that building or like that around Hartford, especially downtown, because uh, the sun hits in all of the buildings. But, you know, all of the pictures that I've taken from that specific uh, for a state of blue is just places that I have walked around many, many times and places that people can resonate to. Thank you. Um. I mean, another example of multidisciplinary. Ying Yi, what is up, my friend? I was scrolling through your Instagram and Hi. you definitely get what we talking about, like the textures and everything. What is up with you? What was your connection to this? Um, I I was um, studying um, painting uh, when I was uh, in undergrad school and later I emerged into uh, sculpture by uh, I really interesting about the deeper medium and also I uh, love to do in performance arts. So uh, a lot of time uh, uh, medium to me, it was uh, uh, such uh, uh, rich things I can touch and feel. And so um, I really enjoying it. I'm so honored you guys have been uh, providing this uh, space that having, uh, having us to being here and showing our work is such a great honor. Um, the work I have been uh, submitting to you guys, uh, it's one of the images that I'm taking uh, from the uh, phones that uh, my parents, uh, in my parents' restaurant, uh, they are prepared uh, raw meat uh, while they are um, in the back of the kitchen wearing masks and then uh, trying to uh, prevent, uh, prevent the safety to every um, community uh, in the, um, also to every home too. Um, the moment of the uh, being there, uh, supporting each other to the family, um, to different people. And then the other pieces I was submitting, because um, while I was um, doing the program at the Makerspace, learning how to be using uh, 3D printing. And then um, that's the grant um, they have been provided to um, people to learn how to print um, on the 3D printing. So uh, also because I was using, because uh, I'm a Chinese and uh, I in, have been into um, um, feng shui and then house, things like that for the, uh, for my uh, theory of the work. 
Um, so uh, I was also collaboration with my um, professor. She was doing a lot of research about the uh, Mawa. Mawa is kind of the um, traditional uh, medicine um, plants that people can heal and help other to sleep um, during this time. Cause because of the COVID, um, during the pandemic, everyone are so uh, chaos and then uh, cannot able to see and heal. And then I wanted to kind of um, provide this kind of uh, project that to do. And then um, through our um, healing a uh, wearable kind of um, uh, wearable kind of accessible um, um, sculpture that we can heal and bring uh, in display on our house to that. So um, it's kind of somehow a protection of the tiger to protecting ourselves to get away the evil uh, evil force. So I'm really uh, interesting about the uh, personal care for everybody uh, at this chaos time. Um, so this trying to help in, in a little bit. Um, Thank you. That yeah. we're definitely yeah. exemplifying healing arts beyond because you're actually bringing in healing medicine um so it looks like we actually have a whole bunch of artists who collaborated with able to show him so i'm gonna pass it to amanda we're gonna like speed date introduce all these artists and and even better we thought we'd only have like four but we got everybody i see Sonia, i see william you know i see erica so uh, Amanda, it's on you. Then I cut you off. You cut me off. And we're, we're trying to get everybody on here. Sounds Love. good. I'm going to go to Sonia. How's it going, Sonia? How are you? It's so great to see you. It's good to see you too, Amanda. I'm hanging in there, you know. Hanging in. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, one one thing that I, I'm going to ask you, what is what should non-artists know about what you all artists are going through in this past year and right now? Like what, what, if Sonia Plum had something to say, what, what would, what would you say? Oh my gosh. Um, uh, what a great question. Um, uh, it's definitely been one of the most, no, it's definitely been one of the most challenging, but also one of the most, um, I think it's opened up the world uh, be, in, in a certain way. Uh, I met Kevin prior to COVID, but then he opened up doors for me. Uh, I mean, just, I mean, even just to dance, you know, virtually um, to musicians. So, and other collaborations that are happening. So um, that part is like the light part, the, you know, coming into the light part. Um, there have been tremendous dark moments, um, dancing in masks or with no one or in your living room and kitchen is just, it's not, it's not fun. It's really, really hard for, um, for us to be without each other, us dancers, because we're so tactile and visual and need to be with people. So, so I'm grateful to Kevin for doing this um, so, so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sonia. And um, I'm going to bring in William next. I just want to say hi to Bonnie. Bonnie McBride, cousin of the family, is out there and she has some... Uh, She's she's sending her feelings of what what Sonia's saying a mixture of sadness and happiness and thank you to all the artists for capturing both of those being realistic about it. Um, William, tell us a little bit about what this moment is like for you. I think you're muted. Um, just do a mic check real quick. Can you hear us? All right, let's do this. Let's go to Erica, and then we'll come back to William. Um, he's doing so many technical things out there. If you look at his artwork, he's probably got like five different audio devices going on there. Um, Erica, can you do a mic check real quick? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. What is this collaboration? Awesome. And we love your piece in there. Um, you know, Amanda and I were just referencing it. What What was your journey? What were you thinking? Um. So... The end ensemble is made up of myself and Kyle here. Uh, we're composer and choreographer team, and we have project-based performances where we bring in other dancers. Usually our work tries to work with live musicians and current compositions. 
Um, so David was actually a professor of ours and he became a friend and a big supporter of our art um, after we graduated from the school. We both went to the Hart School. Um, and David just had a very playful spirit about him, um, those who know him. Um, he was always very curious about everything around him. So when I heard you were doing this piece and uh, wanted to make something for it, I thought, what would David do? And he would go and play in the snow. Um, and he would, he would see the environment around him. Um, so that's what kind of inspired the piece. When, when yeah. you saw you were the first opening of the thing, what was your first reaction to that? Oh, it was, it was exciting. I thought it was beautiful and like the blue sky. Um, it was kind of like an invitation in for, for everyone. Uh, well, I kind of was like thinking of join me in this kind of secret open space as we dive into the world. I'm like, you know, I, I, I'm so verbal. I can just say exactly what I want to. So um, I think everyone ca did feel like you captured that experience of exploratory curiosity and what better way to introduce the rest of the pieces than that. I think that's William, cause I'm hearing like all kinds of magical magnetic sounds. So Amanda, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you bring William in. Thank you, Erica. And thank you, Kyle. Thank you for opening this whole whole event with that exploring through the snow, through the COVID. We got it without words. It was brilliant. Excellent. William, can we can we hear you now? Let's just make sure. Oh, I don't think we can hear him. No. Uh oh. We got it. We got it. Like, okay. Who does sign language here? <laughs> William, we need you to write some some posts. Right. Hold them up. Hold them up. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to, we're coming back to Marlon. Joni, I see you. We're, we're going to come over to you, but Marlon didn't get a chance to share about his work. Um, so yeah, Marlon, why don't you tell us a little bit? Um, well, I just want to say I got into the arts pre right before COVID hit and I dug deep into it, but my piece was charcoal. This one, it was, I call it young African. So the piece, I found out about the coming home after I did this piece, and I thought it would fit in well because we are what we call home now. So what I captured in the eyes of this one is like mostly when you see these things, you see pain, sadness, hurt. I tried to capture indifference. And if you look at the piece, and I think that's why I chose this one pretty much for the coming home, as it is sense to, to bring in if we're all coming together as one family, we all came from different places, different routes, but from uh, as an artist of color, I want to catch a sense of indifference that we're going to be all right in the long run. So the look you see on this young African we gonna face, we gonna be all right. See, are we? It's gonna be all right. We just gonna have to do what we have to do, and it tied in well. And I had and I, my condolences to anyone who knew David. Um, I didn't know any of this until like just today. So when we talk about the energy of the work, it hit me different. So when I'm listening to everybody, I felt like, oh, wow, is this what really happened? They knew him. So it was a whole different feeling. So now the piece that echoes, it resonates now. So and and I just have to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity and putting all this stuff together and just to be a part of this. It felt really special. Amanda, that's that reminds me, there's going to be so many people that hear our music and see our dance and so forth that don't know. They never even consider, oh, this person might not be here anymore. Right. Right. Powerful. Takes it to a whole other level. Whole other level. Yeah. Hi, Joni. Hi. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. This is so great. Do you want to share a little bit about uh, the other voice and, and what you brought in? Yeah, totally. So, um, the other voice, we create a nonverbal movement-based theater. We uh, are dedicated to exploring um, the unsaid, so just things in, in the world that we're not talking about. And, um, and then we don't talk in, in, our, in, in the way we express ourselves. We use our bodies. And the piece that, uh, that I chose, it's called Masks and the Monster. And um, you know, it's uh, questions, 
how and why we present different masks to the world, um, how varied they are, and, and how they can sometimes um, be very similar. And, uh, you know, really digging into what might be at, um, at the heart of, of the darkest parts of us and how that may actually, we can actually find some unity in the darkest of places. Um, I also was not really, um, I didn't have all the information as far as uh, the music and David, and I was so moved by what I saw. And I just, I thought um, in looking at the segment of my piece, just the way the music enhanced the work was staggering and amazing. So thank you so much. <laughs> That was beautiful. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was really incredible. And just how it all gelled together mm -hmm. was really exciting to see. Um, really something. Yeah. Thanks, Joni. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, really. This was so wonderful. We we may be um er <laughs> Kevin is Kevin is helping us not stay too far in the flow state. He's like, okay, that was the last one. But Joni, I hope you're still seeing this somehow because um that was the perfect oh there you go. Okay. So is Joni Amanda, I you know, you can tell me if I'm wrong. We are friends here. Like, is Joni not the perfect artist to and it's not, and I think we do want to invite anyone to just come on as a group now. Um if you're listening at home, YouTube, Facebook, or on quatropuntos.org, the coming homepage, uh, there's a private chat there too. Just mm -hmm. throw in any questions or last minute suggestions. Amanda and I don't mind. That's what we're here for. We want to post up. We're, like we said, it's all about flow, right? Whatever comes up, we want to show it on the screen or thank you for it or address it. Not that we're experts that can answer it, but this is your time before we end off to do that. But um, yeah, isn't Joni like the perfect artist to end this off because <laughs> the other voice right just mm -hmm. you were so yeah. concise in how you said it but like is i mean that could be the word the phrase for what artists do like mm -hmm. no i can't speak to you in a sentence in a language all the time i need some art to get my point across well what do you mean didn't you say you said this no i translated it and narrowed it down into an English sentence. I didn't say it. And that's why we're having this fight. I'm just speaking on behalf of all artists and people who don't know their artists that are frustrated, right? We're constantly, I didn't just mean what I was allowed to choose from to talk to you. You know, that's why we hug and kiss and make food for people and dance. Like you can't say everything in this one voice, right? So for you to say the other voice, I feel like you're representing everything that this is about. Um, That's Amanda, awesome. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. That's awesome. I really, um, I feel that too. You know, I feel like really connected to all the other artists and um, wanting to connect more to the artists in this community and um, the people in the community that we can all share. The, the sort of unspoken, um, you know, feelings, desires, questions that we all have, and where we may meet, you know, and even you, though you kind of do that, right? Could you could you talk about a little bit about your process? Because from what I've seen of your work, you do try to like reach out and and allow diversity and inclusion in your work. Could you just talk about that process a little bit? Yeah. Um, so uh, we're very new, you know, uh, right now. Um, but yes, I do. Um, I, I, I am reaching out to um, artists, actors, um, uh, designers in the community. And uh, I like to get everyone in, in the room together um, to, to create and to start with, uh, I like to just start with a seed, you know, usually it's a question, but I leave it really open, you know, of course I have a lot of um, thoughts about whatever we're tackling, but I am obsessed with performers and, um, and music. And I just, I, I like to stay open to what other artists bring into the space. So there's a lot of trial and error, you know, there's a lot of like, you know, I come in, you know, and I'm sort of like, oh, this, let's try this. And I give the artists an assignment 
and then it takes us in a completely different direction. And um, I have to give up a lot of what I came in with. And I think that's, that's hard sometimes, but really great. And um, yeah, I'm just like, I, like I said, I'm just obsessed with that process, with that journey. It takes a while, <laughs> but, um, but I'm, I, I just, I love the evolution. Thank you for, I, I kind of pressed you on that a little bit, but thank you for your vulnerability because I think that's what David McBride did and that's what the Hartford Council and Quattro Punto CT got us to do in this project. And it's like, you're kind of uh, the, the poster child for this because you actually do that in your process. And even as creative flow state people, a lot of us are trying to fit into the box so that we're significant you know, artists make ourselves significant as business people or this and that. And it's like, you are significant the more you open yourself and include and know that you're not the only person in a room with a brain or that has bills to pay. And there's a way to include others in that in that process of living mm -hmm. together. So I think it's important you. to 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 know nothing, to like accept that we know nothing. Um, and that can be really liberating as, as much as it can be scary. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, yeah. Joni. Thank you so much. This was great. It's really great. Hi, Steve. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, great. we can. Yeah. Great. Thanks for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. This was really an exciting event to be part of. Um, Kind of different for Annie and Annie and, uh, myself. We watched it together, and uh, of course, we recorded this piece uh, over a year ago now. And uh, you know, we've been listening to bits and pieces of it. Annie did did a lot of the listening of the of the session herself, and uh, picked uh, the edits that had to be put together for the audio recording. Uh, and then I was doing a lot of listening, uh, going back and forth with Justin Kurtz, our sound engineer. Uh, trying to you know uh, finalize the uh, the you know the adjustments to the sound and everything, but uh, we haven't played the piece in over a year, so you know it it's evolved in our heads uh, a fair bit because uh, you know when you're playing the thing, especially you know I, I don't know if I don't know if it sounded difficult or not, but I can tell you <laughs> it's a tough piece, uh, you know. <laughs> You're in the trenches when you're playing a piece like that. And there's a lot going on in the piece. It's just a lot going on. It's, I was it's feeling very, like the city, the trees, the cats. Oh, yeah, please lot. talk about that. That we were, yeah. we've all been wondering. Like, that's not just like da -da -ding -ding, da -da -ding. like it's 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 a complex piece. Well, there's there's the artistic imagery that's involved, but there's also just the technical aspect of of playing the right notes at the right time and staying together and not getting completely lost. Uh, and David, David was uh, good about uh, stretching limits. Uh, you know, I've played a few of his other pieces. Um, he wrote a string trio for my uh, desk and string trio a dozen years ago. And that's one of the hardest pieces I've ever played. Um, just he had us do, do things in that trio. I remember he had us do things I've never been asked to do before as far as timing. He had it, he had it, uh, I think he had the parts written out in a way that you had to one player had to actually slow down gradually over the course of about a minute while other people were playing written out music that was they they had to speed up gradually and you were supposed to meet every once in a while and then come together finally at the end but man coordinating that was insane and there were there were some really challenging things in this quintet as well. Um, the just uh, you know some some effects that we had to do with pizzicato. I have I have two children who I can't really call children now, young adults, and uh -huh. um, you know when when kids are two years old, they start saying no a lot, right? And you have to work with kids. Anyone here who has kids or any artists who are also teachers, like David was a composer. Oh. Like, I feel like a lot of our, us artists are also like leaders of others in some way, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's almost like an art to that, even if you don't call yourself an artist. You talk about someone giving you challenges and things you never had to do before. I want that skill for my kids. And I think a lot of mm -hmm. students like, because you're smiling as you're saying this. Yeah. So, I mean, 
John's here too, and I want I want him to chime in as well. But can y'all talk about um what is that like? Why are you smiling when you're saying this guy? Because I want to be that. I think a lot of well, us want to be because it was kind of fun to be challenged if you do it in the right way. Is that what yeah, you know, he was very good natured about it. Uh and he'd he you know, we'd We'd get the music and, and uh, you know, I remember in the, in the trio a dozen years ago, we'd, uh, we, we just looked at parts of it and go, how are we going to do that? I, I mean, how is, it, how is that supposed to work live? I mean, I, I mean, you could do it in a studio and work it out, but, but you were supposed to play this live and, and, you know, but it wasn't something I thought we'd be able to really do, but we figured out a way and, and it worked. And, uh, you know, so anyway, the, uh, the, the, uh, what I was saying before, though, was the piece changed a lot over the last year because <clears throat> I haven't had to worry about actually moving my fingers and, and, and doing the timing stuff for the last year. So I've just been listening to parts of it and, uh, and occasionally a whole, whole run through of it. And, and so it's the, the, the actual challenge of playing. It has faded into the background a little bit. And then getting to hear it today with all these different visual images and videos of all these incredible, incredible artists. It was so, so fun, you know, and I, I, at times in the piece, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting with Annie and, and we're, we're, we're kind of uh, giggling about, about how much rehearsal time went into that one five second thing and it's just gone, you know. <laughs> But but now we don't have, and then but there were other parts of it where I'm 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 so engaged with the, the overall mood and uh, and seeing what was going on with it that um, I kind of forgot in, in there was there were a couple of sections of the piece where you know I, I was trying to remember what is it I'm playing in there I can't even remember I just hear this 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 wonderful overall effect plus mm. visual images and so many great That's artists go yeah I loved it absolutely loved it. Hi, John. Welcome. Hello. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for putting together this amazing presentation. Hello, Steve. Good to see you again. Nice Hope to see you. Well. Oh, that, that's heartbreaking. The, the good to see you again, the distance, you know. But yeah. there you are, side by side, as we are in the Brady Bunch family, the McBrady <laughs> Bunch family now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of have, you know, whatever's on your mind, John, but I also kind of have that same question, if you could weave that into what you're feeling now, this idea of being challenged in a way that kind of doesn't feel like, oh, you know, it's it's still art. It's okay for people to tell you to do something, and it, 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 that doesn't take away the creativity of it, right? Well, first of all, it's, I studied, I, I was lucky enough to had the chance to study with David one-on-one -on -one for a year and a half. And may I just say, it's great to have the chance to collaborate with him one more time. Mm. So amazing, amazing, compassionate guy, just playful, very open spirit who always found something to learn from life. He was able to make a great teacher out of the world around us. Hmm. And I think this collaboration really captures that essence of him beautifully. So it was, even though we can't be together in Hartford, it's great to be together in this virtual space. And I think David would not let COVID-19 be an impediment to collaboration and co-creation of an experience like this. So I think it's still within his spirit, despite the circumstances that we're all in. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right, we have Erica coming back. I just, you know, as a student of David, I think it would be great to get Erica's response to that same question, you know, because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but he actually had to give you grades, right? Um, well, so, I was in the dance department, but Kyle, I'm not sure if Kyle's still here somewhere. Kyle was uh, the full student of David. Um, but I do have stories um, from Kyle as a student of his. Um, and it wasn't included in the video, but if you, if you saw my full performance at the very end of the dance, I lie down and kind of like reach up towards the sky and 
that kind of came from um, one of Kyle's pieces that David worked with on him. Um, they were, uh, he, one of the instructions was to relax and, and enjoy the piece, just kind of how he said, you know, he was gonna play, Kyle was gonna play a piece and he said, relax and enjoy the piece. So David stood up, he walked over to the side of the room and he lied down just so he could relax and enjoy the piece. And whenever Kyle was working with David on his music, um, David would always just kind of close his eyes and he would just fully kind of feel and absorb everything. And Kyle's there, Kyle wants to talk more about his experience as a student with David, but um, it was very, he was very in tune with every, every sound, every image that he, he heard. So Kyle, you can talk about that if you want. Yeah, he he um, he's one of the few people that are, yeah, one of the few people I've ever met in my entire life where when you would talk to him or show him something, and that was the only thing going on in the world. He didn't care about anything else. He never worried about his phone. He never worried about anything else. You go in for a lesson and you show him some piece of music as a student of his, and he is yours for the full hour from start to finish he's there completely and he's one of the only people that i've ever met that is truly like that and it was never it never seemed hard for him to do that it was just it came so naturally to just connect with people and just to be in the moment and to experience things uh and so it was it was a really special time for me working with him yeah and that story that erica told i was in my bass recital and he just goes and lays on the floor and nobody's surprised. Everyone's like, yep, there goes David laying on the floor. It's just, it was wonderful. And we did another, we did, after his passing, we did a concert uh, in the Hartford Art Space uh, and had a, a moment in memoriam with him. And we had several people lay on the floor that was inspired by that um, that moment that he had. So we, we, all, we all loved David and we all miss him and he, uh, he was a very special person. So so did did people like not want to turn in their assignments or grades because it was like, oh, he's just a cool guy? Or did people get their stuff done for him more because it was fun to get assignments done? Like, what is it like receiving grades from someone like that where it's not just like, because this is a fear that I think a lot of us have as artists. We're, we're artists here to our, our fans and then to our students and our teachers, right? And our mentees, we're like a person that gives them feedback, right? Um, what, what was that like for you? Like, did he actually have to give you grades in the program you were on? Or was there some kind of judgment coming from this amazing artist? What was that like? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, he gave us grades, but, you know, they were... They were not as important as the things that you learned, um, and and David was a was an interesting blend because he was all the things that people have said and and I've talked about. But as a teacher, and especially as a composition teacher, private composition teacher, he had a very I don't want to say a high standard, but he had a high expectation that you would come in and bring stuff in every week, um, and he expected that of you. And if you know you had a hard week, he would understand. He was like. A, wasn't a taskmaster, but he did expect you to bring a lot in every week and work hard and commit yourself to it. Um, and so, if, but if you had a hard week and you didn't have a lot to show, he would never end the lesson early. We would listen to a piece of music and talk about it, or we would sight read piano duets at the, um, at the piano and just anything musical that we could do for the hour, he would always fill it up. He would never try and end early or take the easy way. He was always there for you. 100%. Amanda, that's like the grades are not the goal. They're a tool to help the experience. Yeah. The time is in the present is what is valued the most in that, in that moment. And I love that. That's amazing. I think that's what every student wants, right? You want that. Oh, yeah. You want that time, that attention. That's really just wonderful. Story. It, was, it was very valued. You know, you knew you knew you were going to get a whole hour of David every time you go into a lesson. 
which was, you know. I'm, I'm sure Lisa has the other perspective as the wife. She's like, I, I needed more attention from David. Like, what, what is this like as the wife? We, we having a candid moment here, right? We, we give him real. This is almost like a master class in being an artist, a teacher, and a family person. And you know the family person better than ever. Like, we're really, really getting behind the personality of a real full-time living artist. Like, did you feel like it's hard as someone's spouse, you know what I mean, to to always feel like you get enough attention. What what's your view on that? Well, I I sort of second what Kyle said that when he was there in the moment, he was in the moment at home as well. And I would say he was one of the most dedicated, devoted fathers ever. He's just an absolutely wonderful father and the kids didn't miss it, anything and the fact that he was a composer, I think, added so much to their lives as well. And I'm, I'm really grateful for that. That's, that's amazing. Um, Lisa, do you have any thing? I, I mean, are we, are, are we closing it up, Kaim? What do you think? I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I mean, I definitely like. I could keep I'm, talking for hours. Yeah. I feel like I got a secret access pad. Like I forgot I was a host for a second. I'm just in the front <laughs> row. Like that is amazing. You know, and it's it's funny. I do a coaching thing called Make It Full Time, right? It's all about, you know, artists. And one of the things people say is, well, you can't be a full-time artist. But what Lisa just said is what the goal is for a lot of us, at least me, which is to have someone say what you just said about David, which is that. No, full-time artist doesn't mean you're playing the instrument 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. It means you're balancing all the important parts of your life in a way that allows you to fully immerse yourself in the art while making your loved ones feel like you're fully immersed in being there for them too, mm -hmm. you know? It's a um, true act and, and he, he did it pretty well. So, yeah, Lisa, I think I, we're, we'll probably have you end off and then Amanda and I will, you know, say some comments and, and thank everyone for being here. Um, so stick around for for that. We're going to probably give you some missions to go on Instagram and stuff. But Lisa, um, what what is it that you would want to say to all of us while you have our attention? Um, and to those who are there's some people listening beyond Hartford, obviously. What is this all about to you? What would you be remiss if it wasn't said in this moment? Well, I think it's important to sort of reinforce what, what you have been saying all along, how important the arts play for all of us, be it Hartford, New York, wherever you are in the world, it's, it's such a vital part of our community and it's not frivolous and it's not unnecessary, it's absolutely essential. And David knew that, and I think both his kids know that. I think his students know that. And I just want to thank again everybody involved in this extraordinary project. And I'm really, really honored to have been a part of it. And I, I thank you all. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you for your piece. Because um, David knows Lisa loves cats. <laughs> The felines plus the jazzy con. That's like my favorite. You know, like when you're doing peace, you go in this flow state we've been talking about. But sometimes you get to hear your own stuff and be like, oh, I like that. And that was like, that was straight from you giving me a suggestion and it fit right in the middle. And like, then when I saw the piece after I did that, so then it went in, I was like, yeah, I love that. So thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. Um, Amanda, let us thank everybody. Um, we want to thank, well, you can't thank yourself. So thank you to Amanda Roy of the Hartford Greater Arts Council and previously of CT Humanities and previously of eating vegan and finding ways to eat, you know, and tell me all the, the amazing parts about vegan. Amanda's an amazing person. And like Jimmy, she is actually a drummer as well. Um, and I think Amanda exemplifies what we talk about this full-time artist thing. So her part of her art is making sure that other there's always other artists to collaborate with, right? I feel like Amanda decided one day, like, if my community isn't doing art, then I can't collab. So she's like dedicated her life to doing this. And I truly have not, you know, like 
There's been so many events where I'll just see Amanda and Mr. Roy, shout out to Mr. Roy, you know, sitting there and just not only trying to help the thing being done, but just like kind of smugly sitting there like, I'm making this happen and I'm in the crowd and most of you people don't even know. So I need to thank you for that. Um, who else do we need to thank? We need to thank all the artists that collaborated. I'm going to thank you because you do such a thoughtful job hosting an event like this. Like this event all came together so great. And you just, you know, you add the, the icing on the top of the cake, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we, we need to thank the artists. And I mean, Cuatro Puntos. Yeah, Kevin, <laughs> Cuatro Puntos. And, and for those who don't know, speaking of COVID, my introduction was uh, they just put calls out to artists like every week and they'll have a, a featured artist from like across the world. I think I had like a violinist from um, Australia and she was playing and I got to do my raps with that. And then they had visual artists. So, you know, Cuatro Puntos does this type of thing. They were the perfect people to facilitate this because throughout COVID, they've been having these sessions where they get artists from around the world to collaborate based in Hartford um, throughout throughout the, I guess, throughout the year now because it's been going on. So definitely follow Cuatro Puntos dot CT dot CT. Yeah, I mean, Kevin, and he he works with a small team, and they do incredibly impactful work. It's it's really great. And shout out to Steve in the Otterino Center at yes. University of St. Joseph. Steve Ginsburg. Yeah, for sure. T tell us a little bit about Steven's, what he, because Steven was like on this live the whole time behind the scenes. Um, tell us a little bit about what Steven brought to this project. Yeah, I mean, the, the Otterino Center and Cuatro Puntos partnering with for multiple events. And I mean, the Otterino Center at University of St. Joseph is a beautiful space. Can't wait to go back to actually being physically in that space again, but um, just really doing great things to continue to bring um, art to the community through the virtual space. And um, they're doing a great job. Shout out to Hartford Public Libraries too. They definitely helped promote this and um, they've definitely given a space to a lot of the artists who were featured here as well. And I know they'll continue to do so. And one of the people working there is Jasmine Augusto. And um, Steven brought us together for my favorite, favorite, favorite event, live event, right? If y'all can remember back to live events, my favorite event of the previous year and it was where we talked about like, you know, we just performed, but the con the discussions going into the performance were about the nexus of spirituality and art. And you mentioned the word magic. Um, you know, the woman who wrote the book, Eat, Pray, Love, which a lot of people know as, you know, blockbuster movie and everything. She wrote another book just about the artistic process. And she talks a lot about she says magic, like you say, Amanda, you know, some people call it spirituality, some people call it magic, but that part, that thing that art brings that um, even the artists themselves is not completely, uh, completely in control of. And that's part of being a great artist. You've heard that from many people in, in different ways on this call. So Steve, I want to shout out to you for facilitating that because we actually held it in uh, you know, a church, right? It was a church environment. And um, if there's if there's anything that I think a religious building should be used for, it's to bring different people together in a safe way, in an open way where we all don't know more than each other, but we're there to learn something from everybody there. So thank you, Steve. Thank you for having people register and kind of try to emulate uh, the ticket process and you know, with with the seriousness, right, Amanda? Mm. You remember the ser We were all talking before the call, and we're like, "Yeah, we're gonna do this." And Steve just like, and I'm like, "Steve, you're scaring me." And it's like I'm I'm making sure people are signing up and they're understanding the process. So thank you so much for for again bringing this to the audiences and making sure people actually attend what artists create. Yeah, and Steve is an artist himself. He comes from a theater background, right? Right, and With a great uh, sense of humor. That's why I'm, why I'm, why I'm 
blowing up spot. I know he has a great sense of humor. Who else? We have to thank David McBride for mm. this piece and his mm. family. Like, what what a what a celebration of mm. a really incredible person and talented musician. Um, mm. Yeah, it, this was a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Whoever took that that last photo of him, I'm gonna go back and watch it again. I, I know I'm not the only one. I'm sure a few of us are, but whoever took that last photo at the end, man, brilliant. Just to see him staring back at us through all of this, like, keep going, you know? Yeah. I did this. I brought y'all together, and y'all all got an A plus. And the grade, <laughs> the grade wasn't really the thing. It was just to let you know I'm a professor too. So when I'm telling you to flow and have fun and do all these mystical things, just know it's coming from a professor, right? <laughs> Thank yeah, you, David. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I, I just think let's let's keep this going. Um, the arts are, are gonna be so critical to everything that goes on in the next year and, and keeping this collaboration, the spirit of collaboration going is, is going to be, it's gonna bring everybody up um in in such a good way to you know come out of what has been you know the hardest year for for artists and for everybody um yeah 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 it's truly amazing it's truly amazing um you know when you're an artist you're already used to like having you know the salaried position is always staring you in the eye and it's like this happens regularly and da, da, da. And as an artist, you go, well, some days I get a billion dollars and then other years I get $5 and I got to make that billion dollars last, right? But that's exponentially increasing. It's exponentially nerve wracking during COVID times because you usually something pops up by the end of a couple of weeks of the month. And now I know for a lot of people, um, Please, if you're in the Hartford area, please check out Let's Go Arts. Check out what Amanda's doing. Shout out to you know all the staff that works with you because I see you're still smiling. So I see they haven't killed your spirit. You know, <laughs> no so way. Give it to our girl Amanda, y'all. But I think they are. So shout out to them. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's please reach out to this organization, Let's Go Arts, Hartford Greater Arts Council, see what they're doing. They offer grants. More important, they offer like a community and guidance and just let you know, like you're not the only one going through this. I, um, I'll plug myself. I do have a program coming up in March. It's my third version. It's called Make It Full Time. And it is a coaching program for uh, full-time artists. But in a sense, we talked about not just sitting there doing your art full-time, but just being able to have a full life that includes you not post postponing your art. Um, so thank you for giving those resources. Thank you to the Greater Hartford Arts Council. Thank you to Quattro Puntos. And thank you to Hartford Performs and Arts Collective and uh, you know Charter Oak Cultural Center and the libraries. And um, I could go down the list. Y'all, what y'all do is really amazing. And um, David McBride hopefully just shown a spotlight on um, how important it is to get started before you know the results of things all the time. So there, there's more people out there waiting for your art and knowing that um, we're on the same team than you would think just by listening to the news. Um, so just get started and, and somehow you'll attract those who are on the same path as you. Yeah. You saw that today. Mm. I think that that just tied it all up in a nice bow that was perfect all right kevin shut us down we out <laughs> thank you Peace. everyone